Now the situation for the ball is that it rolls down one incline up the other. Slopes of the incline are not necessarily equal. As we've seen, it's possible that a shorter roll on this incline could result in a longer roll on this one. But we also observe that when the ball rolls back down this incline and up this one, it ends up not as far up the incline as it originally was. And if it comes back here, it won't go as far as it did the first time. And each time, its uh, distance back up the ramp will be less than its distance down that ramp on the previous roll. Okay. Uh, well, here's the picture. We've got the displacement vector delta x1 and delta x2, weight 1, weight 2, frictional force 1, frictional force 2, and the normal forces. First, normal force F1 and an F2 pin. Now, uh, the work picture for this first situation, let's go ahead. going to do it over here too. Um, yeah, I haven't. I was looking for my label. I had it all the way up here. I couldn't find it. Okay. So we have our delta x1 vector here, our weight vector, projection, parallel component. We multiply this by this. We get the work done uh, by gravity on the first incline. And we do the same thing on the second incline, noting that the weight vector, the parallel component, the projection of the weight vector is in the direction opposite motion. So we have negative work done by gravity as the ball goes up the incline. And remember what we said about potential energy. Again, this work being positive means potential energy decreases as we move down the incline. Uh, work done being negative here means potential energy increases as we go back up, gravitational potential energy. Okay, now, the work energy theorem, this is actually the work kinetic energy theorem, which I said during class, but uh, for the record, let's get it on there. Okay, the work kinetic energy theorem says the work done by the net force is a change in kinetic energy. Again, remember that's uh, easily derived for at least the case of constant acceleration, which is the case here, by substituting acceleration equals force divided by mass, net force divided by mass, uh, into the equation of motion, Vf squared equals V naught squared plus 2A delta S. Um, so the very simple derivation of this formula, and you want to keep track of that so you don't forget where it comes from. Okay. Uh, okay, when the ball is released from rest and comes to rest, so it's released from rest here, comes to rest here, uh, the kinetic energy at rest is zero, so the kinetic energy here and here is zero in both places. Um, so the change in kinetic energy is zero. And it follows that the work done by the net force is zero, the work done by the net force being equal to the change in kinetic energy for reasons that you should understand very well. Okay. Now, if the work done by friction, or if the force of friction is zero, that is, if we're in an ideal case where we have no friction, then the work done by the net force uh, is just equal to the uh, work done by the weight force. Okay. Now, because that, the weight force is the only force that does any work. Remember, the normal force being perpendicular to the displacement in both cases is always zero. So the work done by the weight force then uh, is zero, okay, from start to finish. Since uh, the work done by the net force is zero, okay, again, reasoning. Uh, Change of kinetic energy is zero, so the net force does zero work. No friction, then the net force is equal to the work net the, the work done by the net force is equal to the work done by the weight. And since the work done by the net force is zero, the work done by the weight is zero. And we come to the conclusion that uh, the weight one parallel, the project uh, I've got the parallel on there. It's not, Okay, uh, the weight one parallel times delta x one, that is the projection of the weight full weight vector on 
the displacement vector, the parallel component of that weight vector, times del x1, plus the same calculation for the second ramp, this projection times delta x2 has to equal zero. Now, what's that mean? Among other things, it means uh, that this picture isn't very accurate because in this picture, both of these vectors here, the parallel component of the weight 2 vector and the delta x2 vector, are bigger than they are on this picture. It shows the picture is not completely accurate. Okay, I've got uh, probably too big of an angle here. Uh, which caused this projection to be a little bigger than it would be for the picture that I have up here. So uh, put in a plug for an accurate diagram. Uh, I didn't really make any effort to make this diagram accurate because I wanted to be able to point that out. Uh, that wasn't really a mistake. Uh, that was kind of an intentional uh, thing. Uh, usually it's a mistake. This time it's, it was really kind of intentional. Um, so again, you see from the picture that there's something wrong here. This ramp looks steeper than this ramp, so that this projection is a bigger portion of the weight vector than this projection. Remember, the weight is the same both times. And of course, the weight vector looks bigger here than it is here, too. <coughs> Excuse me. But we're talking about the weight of the ball, and that's the same in both cases. To make the diagram accurate, this slope would have to be less. This weight vector would have to be, you know, probably 20% shorter. And that would make this vector somewhat shorter, even if this vector is longer. Okay, so if this vector is smaller than this vector, to make this true, then this vector has to be longer than this vector. Meaning that uh, if we have a shallower angle over here, then this displacement is going to have to be bigger than this displacement under the assumption that the friction force is zero.